Today I'm going to be showing you how to code up a box blur algorithm by way of a problem I solved in the website CodeSignal, a great website for practicing your coding. So what is a uh, box blur? You can read this Wikipedia article here provided to you by CodeSignal. What it is is an algorithm that condenses the value of a 3x3 three three matrix, an array of arrays, into one singular value. And here in the example, we have image equal to um, a matrix of three arrays, and how that results in the box blur algorithm turning it into just one, one array. Now, how did we get to that point? Well, the middle input, middle pixel, is the result of summing together all the elements in the arrays, and that would be equal to 15 if we did it here with this example and then divide by the amount of elements so you get an average and you get an average of, of what the total disbursement of the pixels is per element and that would be 1.6 recurring here and then you need to do a math floor on the operation to turn it into a rounded down value um, a single value in this case one so it gets more complicated when you get larger arrays for example here four by four if you look in the test suite in the bottom right I'll click in and I'll show you how even within the code signal arrays it gets to the point where we're thinking about uh, here it looks like a 7x7 seven seven, um, grid. So it can get pretty large and, and it's a question of how does the algorithm move across the values to begin with. Now I approached it as first thinking of it as the central point and, and relative to the central point what other values are being grabbed. And what I mean by that is here, we'll first scroll up here, if we look up the most simple element that can be reduced into a singular value. It is a three by three matrix. So that has a central point seven in this case. So if we go into an element which is much larger, in this case, the image of four by four, uh, the first central value is a six. And what that does, it will grab this uh, series of numbers, this series of numbers, this series of numbers, condense it into one, and then that central value will then be moving over one to now two, and then it's gonna be grabbing these values up here, these values up here, these values up here. And as it hits the end, moving left to right, at least in terms of how I've um, visualized this problem, the central point moves down to here. So then what it will do is it will grab these series of values, these series of values, these series of values, shift over one, now it's on seven, and then it's going to be grabbing the elements directly above it. If we're producing again a three by three grid, the elements, three of them to its left and to its right, and then also three elements below it, 420 in this case, um, 420, um, and, and again, using that as the values needed for this calculation here, where it takes the sum of all of them together and then averages it over how many there are, and then does a math floor down operation on it to get its value. So that is the box blur problem. Let's begin to code it. So I'm going to begin coding up the box blur algorithm. First off, I've set up some test cases down here for you to get a better sense of what we're shooting for. So looking at the simple test, what we're trying to do is condense this 3x3 three three array into a singular uh, array with one element inside it. So that is the simplest uh, description of what our algorithm is trying to achieve in small bits. And building from there, if we make it so it's a slightly larger test, the medium test with the 3x4 array, we are going to be moving from a target uh, value first to 54 and how it is supposed to grab the three elements on top the ones to the side of it, the ones below it, the three below it, uh, summing those together and then averaging it out with a math floor function. Once that's done, it's gonna move on to the nine. Nine will do the same thing, grab three target elements on top of it, one to the left, one to the right, the three below, sum them together, take the average math floor, that becomes a singular uh, numerical value which then becomes represented as a row in an array. So you can see that here should turn into 30 and 40 within one array. Now, if we get to something slightly larger, same thing. It's just that when our, um, our movement of our algorithm gets to the end, 
it's going to jump down, so it's going to start evaluating the values below. So when it went from 6 and 2, it then goes to 10, grabs 3 on top, left, right, 3 below, and then shifts over 1, and then grabs the 7, and then does the same thing with 3 elements above, left, right, and below. So where to begin? We first know that we want our algorithm to return an array, so we're going to go ahead and do that first. Let Going to call it return box. We then want to think about where our algorithm starts, regardless of the size of the array, every single time. And if we look at it as a coordinate plane, it always starts at 1, 1. Now, looking at it from a computer angle of the coordinate pl plane beginning in the top left, uh, 1, 1 in this first simple test is 7, that central value. That is where our algorithm will start. And it's starting there because this would be 0, this would be 1 this would be 0 and then this would be 1, so 7 is 1, 1. And it would also start at the same exact place regardless of how large the array is. In our large test, it would start at value 6 because that is 1, 1. So let's go ahead and code that up. Let x is 1. Let y is equal to 1. Then we're going to start thinking about the end condition and, and, and basically how we want our algorithm and our, and our movement to flow through the matrix of values. So we're going to say that when it gets the end of an array and there is nowhere else for it to move, nowhere else for it to grab onto, we want it to end and we're going to represent it like so. Okay. So here what we have is we say while uh, x plus 1 is less than the image uh, dot length minus 1, continue to do some stuff. Now, why we described it as x plus 1 less than image dot length minus 1? Well, first, image dot length minus 1 is because we're talking about indexing values and not just the length of the array itself. So again, going back to this whole coordinate plane idea, we don't just refer to this as 1, we refer to this position here, this 1 here is position 0. So in order to get that to translate into something um, relevant for us to use when we when we think about the movement through the matrix, we need to do image.length minus 1. So basically the maximum position here uh, is represented um, according to um, 0 indexing. Now x plus 1 because we want to anticipate when there are no more values left and we are whenever we take a central value we take the value to the right of it and we take the value to the left of it and that is one left and one right but one right being anticipating when our array is shortening up and there's nothing left is more important so we'll be considering x plus 1 and when it gets to the very end here so really this parameter in here dictates that central point and, and, and when there are going to be no more values for it to grab onto so it can produce a 3 by 3. Because essentially that's how we're looking at building our um, box blur is in 3 by 3 grids. So from within here we're going to think about first thinking about row by row. So let new row. We're going to have to have a function which builds out a row and we're going to call that make row. And it will take in an image parameter. It's going to take in an x and a y starting point to build out that 3 by 3 grid. Once it returns a box, we're going to return box. Once it returns a, a row, we're going to push it into our return box. And then from here, we will increment the x position, meaning that central point will be moving left to right across the whole matrix of values until it gets to the end and it is only then that it will stop and it will return the box. So let's begin thinking about our helper functions and in particular the um, make row function that we just discussed a second ago. So first put a little divider there so we know that we're building out some helper functions. Always good to put in some comments. So I'm going to start building out our function first by declaring it.
notice how uh, with each make row function, I have three parameters that I've required, image, x, and y, discussed earlier. Now, in here, we're going to go ahead and we're going to have what our output needs to be as a row, and that is going to be an array. So let row is equal to an empty array in this case. Now, we need that to move across a row, starting from first that one position here, one, one, and then move on, you know, if necessary, to the next value. So looking at the medium test, starting at 54, it would then need to move on to 9. So I'm going to go ahead and represent that through a while loop. Again, using the length minus 1, so we get zero indexing rather than just um, indexing off length alone. Because we are going to be moving off across a row, uh, we need to be starting at zero and then moving across. And we have a plus 1 because we, again, want to see if there's space to make up a 3x3 three three grid. Now, from in here, we need to start thinking about uh, something that I call focus. So for each of the positions, central positions, it establishes a focus. That will be the name of our function coming up. 54's focus are the three elements on top, left and right and below. 9's focus are the three elements on top, left, right and below. Let's go ahead and think about that right here, like so. Let focus. equal to construct focus, a function we will build out. All right. Now, we're going to be building out this construct focus function, which will really be a highlighter, if you will, for the values above, left, right, and below. That's our intention there. Now let pixel is equal to what will be the sum of that focus. I'm going to call that function sum block. That's going to be summing together the values, performing the math floor on it, and then pushing it into the row array. Afterwards, it's going to be necessary for us to push into the row. And then we want to increment the y position across the row. Return the row. Now, it looks like I have a little bit of a mistake here, but that's simple enough to fix. One bracket there. So here what we have is a function that moves across a row, uh, implements a construct focus function on each positional value, central value. With that central focus, it's going to implement another sum block function on top of those values to sum together each element, average it, and then push together that one singular result into a pixel and then move it across the whole row until it gets to the end. That is the make row function. So next up, we will talk about the construct focus and what that means, how each central value will be grabbing those relative to the top, bottom, left, and right.